In today's video, we're going to talk about how to evaluate pitchers. We're going to look at the ratings, really just your scouting report here is what we have, and then some stats I use to evaluate pitchers in out of the park. Uh, developing pitching, uh, having quality pitching, I find much more challenging than having a quality lineup. Uh, so <laughs> being able to evaluate pitchers and possibly uh, maybe identify undervalued pitchers or the type of value pitchers you want to target uh, is really important. Um, drafting pitchers to develop is really difficult. Uh, I generally, you know, go with the philosophy of uh, draft to the bats and trade for and sign the arms. I mean, I draft pitchers, but I, I generally will not spend early round picks on pitchers because they're so hard to develop, they're so injury prone, et cetera. So let's get into the ratings here. You've got uh, stuff, movement, and control. It's pretty simple. Stuff basically is like um, how many strikeouts your pitchers will get, basically. Their ability to get swing and miss stuff, uh, or swing and misses, uh, is determined by their stuff. One thing that I learned from uh, Alex Murray's video over on the Out of the Park channel, which I didn't know before, is that uh, stuff is determined as a combination from your arsenal of pitches here and your velocity. I didn't know that, um, which is interesting to learn. But... In the end, this number here on the 20 to 80 scale is how uh, how likely your pitcher is to get strikeouts. Uh, movement is next. Movement uh, basically uh, suppresses home runs or other good contact. Um, essentially, how good the quality of the contact is going to be. I target movement pitchers because they suppress home runs, and we want to keep the ball in the yard as much as possible. Uh, especially if you're playing in a homer-friendly park. Uh, like, I don't know, Philadelphia, Baltimore, Colorado, wherever, uh, high movement pitchers are critical to get. Um, but really, I think it's good to suppress home runs anywhere you can get. Obviously, avoiding contact with stuff is really important, but so is the quality of that contact when it's made. Which do I prefer? I mean, you know, say I could have uh, one of these be a 50 out of 80 and one be an 80 out of 80. I would take the movement at an 80 and the stuff at a 50. I recognize some people would not agree with that, but, and I think reasonable minds could disagree on that, but I'm so, uh, I guess, scarred as a Baltimore Orioles fan from playing in Camden Yards where home runs are just crazy uh, in real life and in this game. So I I value movement over stuff. Uh, and that, that example is a little exaggerated, but uh, of the 50 and the 80. Uh, control is basically how many walks your guy's going to issue. I When I evaluate pitchers on these three things, uh, I pay the least amount of attention to control. Uh, that being said, I would say the 35 here that Hall has is like the minimum uh, that you can get away, that I like to try to get away with. I think if you have maybe a guy with like 80 stuff, 60 plus movement and three pitches kind of like Hall's arsenal, you might be able to get with, you can get away with a reliever with like a 30 control, uh, but he's going to have some erratic outings. Uh, I really prefer, you know, 40 plus, but I, I can do, I can, I can talk myself into a 35 plus control. I really try to enjoy, avoid the 30 plus unless it's a really special pitcher and all the other aspects all right next uh we'll, we'll get to the pitches in a second uh but you've got your other pitching ratings over here ground ball to fly ball tendency i obviously prefer ground ball or extreme ground ball pitchers because again it's just uh you know ground balls can't leave the yard so uh i, I will take ground ball uh fly ball tendency all day uh, or ground ball tendency when it comes to the ground ball fly ball tendency all day and extreme ground ball is even better uh, Velocity I don't pay a ton of attention to I mean, obviously I prefer high velocity, right? Um, but I Think it's all kind of wrapped up in a lot of these things, right? If you've got 65 stuff and a 70 fastball, but say he only threw 94. I'm not gonna necessarily think less of him uh, if just his velocity was different um, arm slot, I really do not pay much attention to. Uh, pitcher type, eh, I'm, you know, I, I, it's not something I pay much attention to. I'm not saying you shouldn't or that you can't or that it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm just saying I choose not to pay much attention to. I don't think it's critical. Um, let's jump down to stamina. Uh, for 
for starters, well, I'll, I'll talk about for starters when we get to the pitches too, but stamina, really, if you have a guy who's like 30 to 40 stamina, I mean, he might be able to start for you, but say you have a 30 to 40 guy and he's got really good stuff and some good pitches, those are the kind of guys I put in the stopper role in the bullpen, basically a multi-inning closer. Uh, so that's one thing that I target in free agency sometimes or in trades are guys who are valued or undervalued because they're just valued as regular relievers. Uh, but if they have that higher stamina and they have really good stuff, they can regularly go multiple innings for you and uh, perform really well with a lot of strikeouts. All right, next, the pitches. I mean, D.L. Hall's arsenal here is obscenely good. A 70, an 80, and a 70. Like, he's got the best curveball in the game, and he's got an elite fastball and an elite changeup. Uh, you know, according to my scout, OSA uh, isn't that much lower on him. Uh, but I guess I could have turned scouting accuracy to 100% here to see what it really is. But um, he's got three amazing pitcher, pitches. You'll often be able to find guys that have two great pitches or just two pitches that are great. Um, and those are guys that you want to have be relievers. Basically, you need three pitches, three pitch minimum to be a starter and out of the park and be successful. Uh, now, how sh how good should that third pitch be? I would say I want it to be a 40 or better. Anything lower than that, I don't think the guy's really going to throw too often or throw effectively. So to be a starter, three pitches. Uh, I want two really good ones and a third one that's at least a 40. Um, you know, D.L. Hall, I have no concerns about his arsenal. Uh, now, what stats do I use? You can see I set up my kind of custom dashboard here. Uh, I would say the most important pitch or the most important stat for pitchers is strikeout minus walk percentage. It's basically how often do they strike guys out compared to how often do they walk guys? Uh, it, you know, in, if you're playing fantasy baseball, I highly recommend you look at that stat when evaluating pitchers to pick up undervalued pitchers, pitchers who might be due for uh, some better results. Strikeout minus walk percentage. I think strikeout percentage and walk percentage are uh, better indicators than strikeouts and walks per nine. It's just that I think both are fine. You know, I think strikeouts and walks per nine are fine. And I have the strikeout percentage and walk percentage here just in one number. And really, I just don't put them here as well separately because strike Ks per nine and walks per nine are more intuitive to me because I learned them first before I learned about strikeout minus walk percentage and strikeout percentages, et cetera. So if you don't know any of them or you know all of them equally, I recommend not paying attention to K and walks per nine, uh, but instead K percentage and walk percentage. Uh, home runs per nine uh, can really be a finicky thing that jumps from year to year. Um, one thing that I realized, I did this in my hitter video too, I just totally overlooked BABIP, uh, which we'll get to in a minute. Uh, I like to look at ERA plus and FIP minus. Uh, so ERA plus, uh, like I talked about in the hitter video, the plus and the minus stats are adjusted to era, right? Because this 4.91 ERA in some leagues, in some eras, etc., some years it might be terrible. Some eras it might be great. 102 ERA, uh, an ERA plus, uh, a plus number you want to be above 100, a minus number you want to be below 100. So ERA plus, so his ERA essentially is 2% better than the league average. His FIP uh, is actually 8% worse than the league average, or it could be that the league average is 8% better than him, which are two different things, but I think you get the point, and I can't remember off the top of my head which one it is, but Basically, his FIP is 8% worse than league average at 5.45. Uh, and his ERA at 4.91 is 2% 2, 2 better than league average. So he's around league average in ERA, a little bit worse than FIP. So what is FIP? It's fielding independent pitching. It takes balls in play out of the equation. It uh, takes the, the events that a pitcher, quote unquote, has control over. So uh, home runs, unintentional walks, hit by pitches, strikeouts. And it then takes that number and normalizes it to ERA. So it takes this number and then it turns it into an ERA-like number. So it's like an ERA indicator of how the pitcher does in the outcomes that he can control. Now, Sierra, I think, is new to Out of Park this year. I haven't used it yet, but I'll use it this year. It's, uh, it's basically an ERA indicator that, unlike FIP, it counts the balls in play uh, 
and somebody can correct me if I'm not 100% uh, articulate in this correctly, but essentially it counts for the quality of the contact. So like ground balls, line drives, fly balls. Uh, and like FIP, it takes all the other things, strikeouts, et cetera, and then turns this number into an ERA-like number. So this is almost, FIP and CR are almost the pitcher's deserved earn run average. You can think of it in a way like that. Um, war is, uh, you probably all know what war is, but war is based off of FIP. Uh, our war is based off of ERA. Uh, so war is a little bit like Fangraph's war. If you follow that uh, in real baseball, it's based off of FIP. Uh, our war, which is ERA, I believe is what baseball reference uses. Uh, I prefer FIP more because uh, it, it takes defense and, and batted ball luck out of the equation. Speaking of batted ball luck, uh, I forgot to add BABIP in here again. So we're going to do that, and I'll talk you through why I pay attention to uh, to BABIP. Where's BABIP here? Somebody locate it for me. I can't find it. There it is. Um, where are we going to leave it? No, we don't want it all the way up there. Let's put it down at the end. Uh, yeah, let's put it there. Uh, BABIP is essentially, it's telling you the batting average on balls in play. Uh, the league average is 300, uh, I believe. Actually, I think it's it might be lower now that we're shifting, every team is shifting. But in general, I think of 300 as the league average. But you don't want to just stick with the 300 number. You want to pay attention to what the guy's career number says too. So he's thrown 228 innings, which probably isn't enough to... Uh, move off of the 300, this 278, I would probably still, you know, maybe I just sit down and say, like, okay, except, expect 290 from him, right? Still regress him to the mean a bit because he's only thrown 228 innings. Uh, so this 286, he's probably had about normal luck on batting average and balls in play. Uh, he's got those walks down, but it's only 11 innings. So uh, if you see a pitcher who has a really high ERA and his BABIP is like 450, uh, his FIP is probably going to be much lower because it's basically his ERA is inflated because he's had bad luck on batting average and balls in play, and you can expect him to pitch better in terms of runs against moving forward. Uh, the opposite is also true. If you see a pitcher with like a 1.5 ERA after like 60 innings, but his BABIP is like 180, uh, you're going to be probably seeing that go way up, and he's also going to be giving up more runs. All right, so that's pitchers. So remember... Uh, strikeouts, suppress home runs, walks in terms of stuff movement control. And if you want to see uh, if he's being lucky or unlucky, you can pay attention to FIP and Sierra versus ERA. Also BABIP, uh, strikeout minus walk percentage. Pay very close attention to that. Um, all right. So that's all for this video. I will have more tutorials. That's the word uh, coming your way soon. Thanks for watching, everybody.